Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our daily Moravian text Bible study for Wednesday, the 15th of April. Today we are in Mark chapter 3, verse 20 to 35. And well done for watching this video. I'd really encourage you to keep persevering, keep pressing in and keep building on that rhythm of daily devotion, authentic devotion in God's word. There's a number of things that happen in the passage today that need a little bit of background, a little bit of context. And that's why I'm trying to capture some thoughts in these videos to help you um, grab hold of what God is saying to you today. And the first thing that's worth commenting on, I think, is this family dynamic. It says that Jesus's extended family try to take control of him, which is just hilarious in some ways. He is God. He is uh, Jesus. He's part of the Trinity. But why do they try to do that? Well, they're thinking that he's gone a little bit crazy. And back in verse 11, we read that every time Jesus encountered a demon possessed person, the demon would declare, you are the son of God. Uh, so they're thinking that Jesus is acting like a Messiah. <laughs> He's acting like someone who is God. He's started to believe the hype. He's, uh, it's all gone to his head. And they're thinking, who on earth does Jesus think he is? That's what his fam family are thinking. It all sounds very British to me, actually, when you reflect on it. We love to put people in their place, don't we? We love, um, we, we don't like it when people get ideas above their station. We love to correct and rebuke and bring people down a peg or two, um, particularly using social media from the safety of our own armchairs where there's no real conflict or risk of relational breakdown blowing up in our face. Very British thing to do that we should stop. Uh, so the family are a bit concerned about Jesus. Uh, it's probably a fear. It's probably a love thing. Uh, Deuteronomy 13, 15 talks about those who teach uh, falsely should be put to death. So they're probably concerned that this conflict with the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees will result in Jesus' death and they try to protect him. Eventually, the wider family call for Jesus' mother and brothers. They think, well, if they've not listened to us, then maybe they'll listen to Mary, his mother. And, and it's remarkable that even Mary seems to get caught up in this. She had had the angelic visitation that announced um, the virgin birth. She had given birth to Jesus, knowing that she had conceived what she had conceived had been from the Holy Spirit, not through natural means. She'd been there at his first miracle when he turned water into wine miraculously. It is remarkable that Mary got caught up in all of that. And I suppose it just shows the power and the drive in each of us to be sensible and play it safe and not take too much risk um, and how we can um, override faith and our supernatural calling with what seems sensible and what everyone else is saying. A real challenge. And for Jesus to have ignored Mary's instructions and requests would have been a big deal. Um, these were people who followed the Ten Commandments so carefully and uh, one of those was to honour your father and mother. I think there's a little challenge for some of us today in all of that. For Jesus, um, he wasn't letting other people define him. He knew who God had called him to be. He knew what the scriptures said of him. And I'd really challenge you to challenge you today. Don't let anyone define you other than Jesus. Let Jesus define you. Let his word define you. You are who Jesus says you are, first and foremost. A little break in the video because the dog saw a cat in the garden and went nuts. So I've just started this bit again. But the second part, again, is around identity. The teachers of the law, uh, the Sadducees, they are saying that Jesus is demon-possessed. He's controlled by Beelzebub. 
And Jesus dismantles that argument with an incredible bit of logic that you see in the text. And what Jesus is saying is that he has bound the strong man, the devil, in order to liberate and set free those under the strong man's rule, the devil's rule, the demon possessed. In other words, Jesus is demonstrating fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 61, that he is the Messiah, that um, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to set the captives free, to deliver those from bondage of prison. And so what Jesus is saying, it would have been very clear to those um, Sadducees, those teachers of the law, that he is greater than even the devil. Um, I think it's an incredible thought. Jesus knew who he was. He didn't let others define him. And he based his identity on the truth of God's word.